Okay, YouTubers, I got a little impromptu video attempt here to create an adapter for the Camaro T5 transmission in my Blazer. I'm gonna try to get some freehand video. My tripod's too tall to fit underneath the vehicle, and it's gonna get dark in the next 35 to 45 minutes. So, basically, just a quick story. Um, when you install a Camaro T5 transmission in the normal 12 o'clock upright position, it canters or it angles the transmission mount in the rear. Reason that is, the factory Camaro T5 transmissions sit at a 17 degree tilt towards the driver. According to online, is directly related to some kind of a clearance issue they had in the um, 90s style, early 90s, or late 80s, early 90s style Camaros, Firebirds, all that, F-bodies. They needed to, for some reason, tilt the transmission, and everybody keeps talking about to gain clearance. So I don't know for sure what that's about, but you can look that up on the internet. I didn't want the transmission tilted towards me because I wasn't going to use the small aluminum Camaro bell housing that had the canted or tilted bolt pack. But basically, when you would mount it in the upright position with a regular Chevrolet bell housing, as the 63 to 66 cast iron truck bell housing I'm using, it makes the back of the where the transmission mount's supposed to mount at a 17 degree angle well i tried to um rig it up and make it work well all it did was over these few you know a couple thousand miles i've had this thing running uh it tore the transmission mount which was the like factory s10 truck style basically i have created an i-beam style adapter that corrects that 17 degree angle of the transmission mount pad to a regular horizontal flat mounting surface. But in our attempt to set my pinion angle at my transmission, we raised the transmission, which found out we are, I am not capable of properly setting up the pinion angle on my transmission in this vehicle unless I lower the engine. That's a whole different video, a whole different topic. We found out when it was too late that, around this pole, basically what I've done is raise the engine so high, um, the exhaust manifold ran into the steering shaft. So at this point, my vehicle is almost undrivable because you can't turn the steering shaft because it's literally pinched up against the top of the exhaust manifold. Under I go. Hopefully I'll be able to get a little bit of video so I can show you my little adapter design and show you how I'm going to lower the back of the transmission. Hold on just a second. Naturally, when I want to try to do something, I have just enough tools to get myself into trouble and generally not enough tools to get out of it. But... I just came to the realization in my moment of crisis I either have lost or never owned a 19 deep well socket so I'm gonna have to try plan B actually in my moment of video making epiphany I do have a 19 deep well half inch drive I am saved but this is my uh, socket drawer. I don't ever really show my toolbox. That's my get in trouble, hopefully get out of trouble toolbox. So stay tuned, we're going underneath the vehicle. Okay guys, I'll try to get this as non-shaky as I can. Basically there is the 17 degree canter, 17 degree canter angle of the transmission mount pad on the T5 transmission when it's mounted in the upright position. Um, right now I have it as a solid mount, which will not stay that way. 
I just had to remove the rigged up S10 mount I had that had torn it had torn that mount but I apologize for being a little bit shaky I'm laying on my back trying to hold the camera up against my exhaust pipe just so you guys can get a little bit of an idea of what I'm working with here. Um, but I envisioned a I-beam style mount, or an adapter is really what it is, where you could adapt that 17 degree back to a regular flat surface and then possibly run just a regular flat uh, GM transmission mount. Um, now, this is just my first prototype, uh, which is going to work for the time being, but will probably get shortened another half inch or so. Once I find the actual measurements of a decent polyurethane uh, transmission mount, um, I'll show you the final product that I come up with, because trust me, I had to go to Home Depot and blow like $20 on a, a lot of extra steel to get the materials to make what I have right now so uh, but that is my general I-beam design um, feel free to run with it I'm not planning on you know patenting it or anything like that but it will allow you to build a solid strong adapter that will put you in between the transmission and, an, and your actual transmission cross member and hopefully be able to make it shorter but I want to weld nuts so that I can screw upwards to mount the new transmission mount to the bottom of the I-beam that's because you run out of room to uh, be able to put in your bolt that bolts the adapter to the transmission like you only have a certain amount of space to fit a bolt in through that I-beam on the passenger side because of that canted 17 or 17 degree angle. I mean, right now it looks like there's a ton of room, but the threads alone on that bolt are, th I think three quarters of an inch long or so. But I just wanted to share my little brainchild with you guys while I get under here and try to keep the engine from killing my drive or my steering shaft. Hold on just a okay. second. I end up having to just pull the adapter I built off the car. Um, it was a good idea. Andy had added an adjustable bolt as a temporary fix or setup, I guess, until I can uh, get the actual mount that will fit between here and the transmission cross member. He had put this bolt on there. It had a large, I think it's, what is this, like a 19 millimeter nut here, plus one underneath the bottom of the cross member, where you essentially could use that nut to raise or lower the back of the transmission. Problem is, we didn't know we were gonna smash the exhaust manifold into the steering shaft, and the bolt we used is not threaded all the way to the head so even with this nut i'm sorry i'm i'm blowing my chance at cameraman today uh even though this nut came up to the thread where the threads ended we hadn't lowered the back of the transmission near far enough to get clearance to the steering shaft so plan b and c soon to be hold on Still to brainstorming a solution to my dilemma i wanted to show you this factory s10 mount that I had bent the ears on to mount to that weird 17 degree angle then we had replaced the center bolt to a whatever size takes a three quarter nut I can't think right off the top of my head but we upgraded the bolt size here mounted it to the bottom of that transmission but you can see it was not happy with being mounted the way I had it mounted because she tore. She tore all the way around. Okay, so I was chasing some vibration issues 
yank the drive shaft out to replace the u-joints because i already had those i've had them for over a year went ahead and put the new uh precision i think u-joints in there and i thought well i'm gonna i'm gonna try my new uh brainstorm of an adapter to replace this tore up piece of junk and so far it ain't working that great but i'm not giving up stay tuned okay guys had to pull the uh t5 adapter back off drill the hole in the cross member tab uh probably an eighth of an inch maybe three sixteenths of an inch i'm not sure richard was the one using the infamous unibit to uh and basically what was happening was the up and down of the transmission tail shaft wasn't the root cause of the interference to the steering shaft apparently that engine and transmission wants to push the back side of that transmission towards the passenger side of the vehicle because we had um visually lined up the output shaft of the transmission with the pinion yoke on the rear end to try to straighten up the drive line to see if it would help with any of my drive line vibrations under wide open throttle when we did that that's what took away that really tight clearance we had for the steering shaft to exhaust manifold so we had to basically drill in some clearance in that tab on the cross member and we didn't even have to pry it force it push it nothing literally the engine just set back over towards the passenger side of the vehicle dropped right in the hole we drilled or actually made bigger and slightly to the passenger side it went it, we were just going look it, it went home it went to where it wanted to be and i'm like yeah, i guess so so for the time being we have restored clearance to be between the exhaust manifold and the uh, steering shaft so the vehicle can be operated again um i don't know what i'm going to do the only way to properly fix this situation is to lower the engine in the engine compartment that's going to require some uh, cutting and welding and cussing and praying so we will uh, have to make a video on that when that comes so anyway it is back on the road we had to uh, push the transmission toward the passenger side to uh, regain our clearance. And I'm going to go test drive it here in a minute. And fingers crossed everything's going to be fixed. Appreciate you guys watching. Just made a little impromptu video. Hopefully it's not too annoying and too bouncy. Thanks guys for watching.